Taxi drivers are still refusing to take disabled people or overcharging them. And that's despite the fact that the government promised that from April this year it would be illegal for taxi drivers in accessible vehicles to discriminate against people in wheelchairs. Here's the kind of thing that happens. Emma Vogelman from London has muscular dystrophy and takes a train and a taxi to work in London. She told us she still has problems with taxis all the time. The driver started the meter before he left the car and before he unfolded the ramp, which allows me to get into the cab. As he was unfolding the ramp, me and my PA mentioned to the driver that he'd started the meter that he shouldn't have. He then became very hostile, very argumentative with us and said that he would knock 20p off the price and then tried to encourage us to just get into the cab. We refused to ride with him because he wasn't seeing our point of view. He didn't understand that what he was doing was not only wrong but now illegal. And we said that the person behind us in the queue could go with him and that we would get the next car. That's Emma Vogelman. The new regulations covering taxis, as I said, came into force in April, but they only apply if councils create a special list of drivers with taxis that are wheelchair accessible. If councils do compile a list, then every driver on it must agree to take disabled passengers and charge them the same as everyone else. But most councils haven't made a list. Doug Pawley, a disability rights campaigner, discovered that through a Freedom of Information request, and he's in our studio in Leeds. Um, Doug, I know that you use a wheelchair. How easy do you find it then to book a taxi? It's near impossible. There aren't any in the town where I live. I was just trying to get across Leeds City Centre just now and I ended up having to walk or push myself because so many taxis just refused to take me. So you've tried this morning on your way to the studio? Yes, that's right. To persuade a taxi driver to take you? Yes. One initially accepted my booking and then cancelled it a few minutes later when he realised I was a wheelchair user and and others just, just plain refused. So when you phone and try to book a cab, they just say no? Quite often that's the case, yeah. It happened in York the other day as well. I asked for a uh, taxi and they asked me where and when, and as soon as I mentioned it as a wheelchair user, they said, oh, sorry, no, we haven't got any. And I should make it clear that these are the taxis that are specially adapted. Nobody with an ordinary car is being forced to take somebody they couldn't accommodate. That's correct, yes. Well, I know that you used a Freedom of Information request to try to find out how many councils have made the list they need to enforce these new regulations. You found that only 14% of them had done it. Half said they planned to do it, but a lot of them said they had no intention of making a list at all. How do you feel about that? It makes me quite frustrated, actually. I mean, it's a bit of a silly structure of a law in the first place, I think, requiring councils to go through this procedure. And a lot of councils weren't aware that they have to create a list in order for these um, regulations to take effect. So, for example, Cambridge, they wrote to all of their drivers saying that they would be subject to these new equality obligations, and now they're going to write to them again and say, well, actually, because we've not created a lift list, um, we, you're not going to be subject to these obligations. Well, they're, they're really going to write, write to them and tell them they're off the hook? That's right. They're, they put it in the newsletter in March and that they'd had to, and now they're putting a correct in in their July newsletter saying in fact because they hadn't created a list that in fact the drivers aren't subject to these new equality duties after all. Well you are well known in disability rights circles as the man who took the bus company to court when a woman with a baby and a buggy wouldn't move from the wheelchair space to let you onto the bus. Yes. Um, How hard is it to get around if you use a wheelchair? It can be phenomenally difficult. I mean, this morning I came down to Leeds because I live, I don't know, 12 miles away on the bus and I had to make sure that I caught an earlier bus than I actually needed just in case there was this kind of problem. I mean, there wasn't that problem this morning, happily, but other occasions there have been. And there are no wheelchair accessible taxis in the town where I live and getting them to come out from the three surrounding cities is is near impossible. Um, so every, everywhere I go I experience considerable difficulties in trying to get about. Now the last time we looked at this story uh, we heard that it would take primary legislation uh, to enforce the um, equality laws onto taxi drivers in specially adapted vehicles. Do you think there's any chance that that will happen? 
I doubt it. I mean, it's arguable now that under what's called the public sector du equality duty, public authorities have to consider um, making adjustments for disabled people you know, proactively. So, so they, they're obliged to consider whether to produce this list. And so um, also there's, there's strong guidance from the Department of Transport and the Local Government Association. But even with that, you know, we've discovered that so far about a quarter of authorities are just flat not going not going to do it. So yes, we do need primary legislation, but getting primary legislation through par Parliament is quite difficult. This has been on the statute book since 1995 in the Disability Discrimination Act. This particular bit that says that drivers these days mustn't discriminate against wheelchair users, but it was only um, brought into force on the 6th of April this year. So that took 22 years ish. So, you know, we have to work with what we've got, basically, but it would be nice if they re-looked at it and put something stronger in. Doug Pauley, thank you very much for coming on.